For every smile, there are moments like these. It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, and we are about to play Battlestar Galactica, and I guarantee we are actually going to play, because I've done everything that's required to play, except for start playing. Um, I have, uh, I'm, I'm recovering from a horrible um, lung infection. I'm sure people have had worse. Probably people watching this have had worse, but it's definitely changed my speaking voice. There's a slight raspiness that you may be unaccustomed to. Don't be alarmed. It's not infectious um, as far as I know. And despite what you um, you savages might believe it's definitely not infectious through the um, screen that you're now watching this so don't no no I might cough I might there might be some drips of snot and whatever um, but uh, it won't hurt you unless you let it so um, let's play Nine Ball is starting things off quickly. He had placed an executive order on uh, this fellow, and this fellow's name is Bruzza. I have to remind myself of who we're playing with here. Um, Bruzza decided to, he used his CAG ability to move this guy over here, and then moved himself there, and now he is going to shoot at one of the Cylons. Three, and I believe that will take care of one of them. And so we... We have started with a gesture of, of, uh, of teamwork, and it has paid off so far. Things are looking great in this first moment of the game for the humans. Let's turn up their crisis, and then we'll resolve it off camera. As is fairly common for this game, uh, everyone, there's a lot of yellow, green, and purple out there. Um, this fellow here, Hubba, is the only one who gets blue cards, and Bruz is the only one who gets red. So... That's kind of tricky for both of them. They, it would be nice for them if there was one other person, um, if they were Cylons, because then they would be able to play those cards with a little more um, relaxation. But as it is, they're the only ones who play that, those cards, so it's unlikely if we have Cylons that red or blue cards, at least at this point in the game, would be the cards that count against the skill check. So here we have a mysterious guide here, and the mysterious guide uh, is saying you're not Leoben, or no, someone's saying to the mysterious guide, you're not Leoben. Um, if they pass, this is going to jump up extra. So that's, generally, pass, there's no effect. So here's, there's an, an extra treat if they pass. So it's a, it's a, it's a especially nice one for, for the humans to start out with. These are going to activate though, so that means that these things are going to shoot at the ships out there. We'll do that after the skill check. I think everyone played a card into it. Nine Ball put in three. I think everyone else just put in one, except for Brezza. He was unable to play a card, or so he claimed. Um, let's take a look at what the results are. So we have, that goes for it. One, two, that are for the check, and we'll actually separate them. That makes it easier for me. Three, five, things are looking good. Nothing against yet. Ooh, that's two against. So that's, yes, it's a, Two, three, six. Ooh, now it goes down to two. So, um, for those of you who don't know, there's there's two cards that are put in at random from uh, this deck up here is made up of two cards from each of the decks and then shuffled up. So these could these might not be a trader. These might not be a Cylon who put these in. They could be from this deck here. Anyway, in any case, it's bad luck for the humans. They cannot pull this one off, and so they're going to fail. Um, minus one fuel, and the current player discards all this, their skill cards, so that's particularly harsh. Um, he's going to lose this, and then these are going to activate. I'll sweep off the the cards later. So what's going to happen is these are these have a, a certain series of instructions, a certain order in which they do things. So um, so the the first thing that the the first priority for these things is to shoot one of these unmanned vipers, is what they're called. They're spaceships that are the the human spaceships. Um, so I think they have to get a four or higher. I should probably check that real quick before I do the rolling. I didn't check. I just remembered it's five or higher to destroy it. And it's a six. It would be destroyed. I think Brezza is going to play this card. It's called Evasive Maneuver. Particularly good for him to play that card because um, it's 
going to be his turn next, so he's going to get to draw more cards. So that, that allows this one to dodge that shot and re-roll. And that time it missed. So this next one is going to shoot at it as well. And that's a seven. He has another evasive maneuver. When I grabbed the other one, it actually slid down there. So I'm just going to um, let that stand in for it. And then we'll, I'll retrieve it after I stop the camera. Okay, it did damage it. But that's all right. It, uh, he's still there. So on his turn, hopefully he can shoot them. Uh, this is Brezza's guy right there. All right, Brezza, Brezza just destroyed one of these guys. They're called Raiders, and I'll try and use that name from now on, but uh, this is the bad guy spaceship. He destroyed one of those with his um, his spaceship guns. And then um, everyone needs to analyze an enemy fighter. They got an enemy fighter, and I don't know how they got it, but but it's moving and now they that this person can fly it so everyone um, put in some cards to the skill check except for um, nine ball I keep wanting to call him nine tails after the Pokemon um, and Brezza put in two it's kind of an interesting set of colors it doesn't have yellow or green which are very common and it also uses blue blue and red tend to be um, off colors they tend to be against the skill check so we'll see how it all played out and I forgot to shuffle it so I'm just going to kind of mix it a little bit and just draw from different places. Draw from here. So that's a two that's going for it. And a three that's for it. So we can ascertain that one of these must be from this fellow here um, and one is from the Destiny deck and his name is Hubba? Yes, Hubba. Um, because he's the only one who gets blue, and he only had one blue card, so it makes sense. All right, so now we have a purple. That's four, and I won't make you sit through all these. Okay, so now this is an interesting one. This is a trust instinct. So any of these zero cards, they have this special effect. So what this one does is you draw two from the Destiny deck and put it in. Whoops. All right, and unfortunately, they're both going to count against... So that brings us down to negative one and back up to positive one. I don't think they're going to make it. Positive two and zero. Wow. The humans are not doing so hot so far. Um, failing two of the, the first two challenges. I've, I've not had that happen in my experience. But that is what happens here. So this is going to shoot at our friend Brezza. And here's our eight-sided die and it would destroy him, he is going to play in invasive maneuvers. Now since it's piloted, he gets a bonus to this die roll. So it's really unlikely that they're going to be able to destroy him. They'd have to roll a 1 to damage him. Um, and so, so that actually would damage him. Right? Uh, he's going to play another one. He doesn't want to be damaged. He wants to stay out there. And it's a minus 2 to the roll is what it is. Okay, so that's a three. That's a two. So he's okay, but he he lost two valuable cards. Not super valuable, but two cards in the process. Um, this symbol means that this goes up on the jump track, and when they if they jump, then all the bad ships go away, and that would be nice for them. Hey, right, Tater, as in Todd, she just activated. She didn't even move. There hasn't been a lot of moving. I don't think anyone's moved on the board yet. Um, but I'll go and uh, he'll need to on his next turn, I think. Um, she activated two unmanned vipers, so she had them both go counterclockwise here. Um, she could have, it might have been advisable for her to send this one here to kind of guard these civilian ships, but she sent it right towards the heat of battle, um, and then drew this as her crisis card. And that's a pretty severe crisis right now. They're still pretty far from uh, jumping. What this is going to do is it's going to set up all this stuff, and then... Um, these are the, these raiders here that are going to be set up are going to be activated right away because of the special rules. So it's 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 a sudden um, dose of hot water. But before any of that happens, this one is going to shoot, and it destroys this viper. I don't think there are any of those dodgy cards, so that means it's out of the game. Um, there are a few things actually that last crisis would have gotten rid of would have allowed it to come back repair one destroyed 
Raptor. Oh, no, no, no. These are the Raptors. Um, there are a few things that let them come back, but it's pretty unlikely it might be out of the game, um, which is pretty bad to lose right away. Uh, so that happened. It was too bad no one had a card to, to stop that from happening, but no one did. Uh, and now I'm going to set everything up, and then we will see what happens. I don't think I mentioned this. Um, some some of you might be wondering who who so those of you who aren't familiar with this game might be wondering what these pieces are. These are civilian ships. Um, I don't know why they have like a radar screen. I guess they didn't want to have different models of ships on each one, so they just kind of did this zoom out, um, blippy thing. Anyway, um, basically what happens with these is after all of these guys are destroyed, if these guys are in the same space as one of these, they'll destroy them. And there's no roll or anything, they just automatically shoot them, they're civilians. Um, on the back of most of these, there is something that is lost. So it's generally one of these dials um, will go down if one of these is destroyed. Um, so it's it's something you want to protect and that's the main thing you're you're sending these guys out to do even more than um, destroying the, the bad guys. It's about protecting these civilian ships. So um, that's going to come down to luck right now because no one has any evasive maneuver cards and these guys are all going to be shooting. If It's possible if they all roll lucky that this civilian ship will be destroyed before uh, the humans can do anything to stop them. So let's start with this one right here. Pew, 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 and it missed. So this, this civilian ship is going to be safe. Next one. Pew, pew. That's a destroyed raptor. That's two that are just out of the game now. That's terrible. Pew, pew. This could be a very short, short um, game. Okay, this one is safe. This one shoots pew pew! And that one's safe. So, um, not a lot of damaged vipers, but a lot of destroyed. More destroyed than damaged. That's that's really hard on the humans. Just occurred to me while I'm talking about ships, I should explain the remaining two so you know what they are. These are the kind of like battleships, uh, or the deploying ships of the bad guys, they shoot out other ships depending on the icons on these um, crisis cards that are in the bottom. So they can release more of these, or they can release more of these. These are the boarding ships. They're called heavy raiders. And this, these are called base stars, if you want to know the terminology. What these do is they just move towards these little docking bays. And if they get there, that's how these, these guys can get on the track and start moving up uh, to, to, to killing the humans. So that's all the ships in the game. I think you, you know them all. So we're at the start of Brez's turn here. Um, there's all these bad guys outside there. There is a damaged Viper he would like to repair. However, to do that, he would need to be in the hangar deck. He would need, and he's there right now, but he, it's his time to move. Problem with staying in the hangar deck is that's going to trigger this lady here, Callie, who, for those of you who aren't familiar with the show, he has a relationship with, this character does, um, on the show. It's a very special relationship, but right now he's finding he wants to move away from her because this what this is right here this could cause him to die um, however he needs to be there to repair vipers that might not be the most pressing issue right now there's this big siege and maybe since there are some vipers in the reserves he could go somewhere else and do something else to help out to try and get people out of hot water um, so I think what he is going to do is he's going to move out of there. And what are his choices? He could go to the weapons place and shoot a big blast, likely at one of these guys. Um, just because the you it, sure it could destroy one of those, but it's it's you know, it's like swatting a, a mosquito with a with a cannonball. Um, or he could go here and shoot out some more of these guys. I think he wants to go here and do the big blast against... Hmm, I think he's going to do it against that one. All right, so here we go. This is definitely not a good day to be human. Um, for can these guys are all going to activate. So let's do that first. And again... We, in, our only pilot here has yet to have a chance to draw any cards, and so he is. There's going to be no evasive maneuvers. He's all played out of those. Um, so we'll start with these down here. They're going to be shooting at these unmanned vipers, five or higher, I believe. Let's look at my sheet. I don't have to guess now that I have my sheet out. Chuka chuka chuka. Yeah, five or higher, and that's a miss. This one's going to go pew pew. That's a miss. I'm rolling ones. That's that's good for the humans. It's because I'm using my human hand. Pew, pew. 
That's a miss. And pew pew! This is very lucky turn of events. Just as I speak of luck, it turns. Alright, now it's going to shoot at our, our pilot here. Now, if he gets destroyed, he's going to go to sick bay, and there's going to be some trauma that he takes on. That will be fun. Pew pew! And he does go to sick bay. Another damaged viper. Man, he is going to need to do some repairing soon. And I'll have to... I'm going to look at that... that I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if this is public or not, so I'll look at that and then I'll get back to you. So I looked it up. When a player gets one of these things, they don't reveal it unless it's the one that, that makes you dead. Um, however, this isn't. he doesn't even get to look at this until the start of his turn. So that's going to happen at the start of his turn, if he's still there. Um, someone could make him move with what is called an executive order, which is what... Nine ball used on Brezza at the beginning of the game. All right, so he is stuck there for now. Um, these guys are going to both shoot at Galactica because that's the special text on this card here. And we'll go from there. Where's our, there we go. And they need to get a four or higher, these bad guys, in order to damage Galactica. And that's a one. That's less than four. And then there's going to be another one. And that one is going to damage Galactica. So what we do is we draw one of these random chip things here and see what happens. And this makes it so they lose some food. And speaking of that executive order, a Watermelon just played one on Brazza. Partially to get him out of sick bay. That's a good teamwork thing to do. You don't want someone to start their turn in sick bay ever. But also because he's the main solution to this problem right now. Really, the humans need to jump out of here, but they can't make this jump preparation track go up anymore. They, you know, they just have to get through crisis cards and hope they get that icon. If it gets up to this zone, they can do it with this um, at the risk of losing some population. Um, but until then, you know, they just need to delay these guys as much as possible uh, in, in, in order to get out of there. So she's going to move him. Now he has an interesting choice. Um, he could because of his special power to end up being on one of these, even if it's unmanned, he could <coughs> go out into space through this command action, but he is going to seize the day, and he is going to see what Callie has in store, hoping that it's going to be a bit of good luck for the humans. So, um, we'll take a look at that, and he gets whatever that is. Oh, no, it's going to reveal itself. That's right. So he moves there, it reveals itself, roll a die on a four or lower, lose one morale. So I'm going to stop the camera and see if anyone has any of those cards that adds to the die roll, because no one wants to lose morale. And once again, it is Watermelon who has the strategic planning, that's the card that adds to the die roll. And four or lower, so needs to get a three or better. And she got a three. It's a good thing uh, she rolled that die roll. So this is going to go back into the pool, I believe. Uh, Callie goes away. We'll just set it right there for now. I'll, and then we draw a new one of these guys. And it's going to be Felix Gata. Now, he Brezza gets to choose one of his uh, tokens to put on there. Um, the bad tokens are going to trigger a bad effect if someone lands on them. However, um, he, needs to, he might need to get rid of some bad tokens because... Um, because if he has them at the end of the game, it's bad for him. So he's going to make that decision, and we'll go on. All right, so it's interesting the decision he made because uh, Felix Gata was the one who was chosen. Felix, right now, as I just mentioned a little bit ago, um, the, the humans really want to be able to jump out of there probably early because things are not looking good for them, so they want to run away as soon as possible. He happens to be sitting right where... Um, right where, right on the, the space that lets them jump early if they need to, so it's likely someone is going to go there soon. Uh, so if if Brezza put a bad token there, it's going to get activated sooner or later, and people are likely going to remember that he's the one who did it. So we'll find out, should someone reveal <coughs> um, Gaeta's uh, trauma, what happens. Bruz is going to use his CAG action. He gets to make one of these guys shoot, and then he's going to shoot himself. Here we go. 
and they miss, and sorry, it was a one, I didn't show you that part. I sometimes don't look through the viewfinder, actually most of the time I don't. So. All right, so he got to kill one of these guys. And our crisis is a virus. It's going to launch a bunch of these guys. <laughs> this is really bad for the humans, oh my gosh. And it's a tough one to beat, especially since there's not a lot of seal cards in there. It's another purple and blue, which is rare. Um, let's see what we get. All right, so there's a computer virus. Um, on the Battlestar Galactica, it could mess things up. Uh, people are fiercely typing at their computers. The only people, the pe by people I mean these three right here, these two did not play any cards. He had two cards, didn't play any, possibly because he doesn't have purple or blue, or maybe he's holding something back. Um, she played two. He played two cards, and Watermelon played two. One, I think, is all. So the chances are not very good that they pass, but we'll see. Let's reveal. Um, the bad stuff is really bad. If if anyone was in here, they would be sick. Luckily, no one is. Um, but the bad thing th is that this guy is going to get on board if, um, if they fail this. So let's see what comes up. Oh, no, that's nice. So this does is if... If they're close enough to this, um, within four of the challenge rating, even if they're below it, the bad stuff isn't going to happen because their will is so iron. Um, that's five in favor. That's great. That's five against. That's zero. Uh, that's definitely destiny. No one had any red cards to put in. Uh, that's one above. When I say destiny, I'm referring to this deck over here, the random cards. It's called the destiny deck. One, two... Oh, zero. And okay. So here we see here, um, we, we have the magic number of three cards against. When you have three cards against, you know there's a silent at work because um, only two cards come from that. So the most that you're going to randomly get against is two. Unless you're playing with people who don't know, understand the game. I've had it happen where um, cards would be against and there's a lot of judgments based on that when really someone just put in the wrong card. But here we have cards against. We can rule out the red card so it's going to be yellow and green. Players are going to be looking at each other right now. It's one of these three people. Um, one of these could have definitely come from the destiny. So they all are suspects. So right now, they're going to be thinking, and I'm going to start putting some numbers on the board because people are going to be suspicious of each other. And we'll get back to that after we put this guy up here. And again, no jump marker. That's rough. All right, so here we have people's suspicions of each other after this large event. Usually, uh, when I've done this in the past, people have had... Um, so suspicion has crept up a little more slowly, but this was kind of a, a, a pretty obvious um, Cylon involvement here. Um, so one thing to consider is Nine Ball kind of made herself look good with all of the um, strategic planning cards she played. Those cards help out, and they you don't really need to... Um, you there's no way someone would know that you had them. So that she played so many was some pretty strong evidence on her behalf. Um, those are the ones that add to the die roll. Um, so here we have Brezza. He th he's suspicious foremost of Watermelon, then of Hubba. Hubba is suspicious of Watermelon, um, but not by much. He's still kind of unsure. Nineball is equally suspicious of Watermelon and Hubba. Uh, Tater, Tater is suspic equally suspicious of Hubba and Watermelon, more suspicious than Nineball. Um, she definitely has a, has like a harder worldview, and Watermelon is the same way, except for the you know the other two are involved. That she's sure of her innocence. Tater's sure of her innocence, and Hubba is sure of his innocence. Nineball's turn. He has to ascertain the th threats. There's two different two different threats now because this is on board, and this this one doesn't go away when the fleet jumps. Um, so there's there's that Cylon on board, and then there's the ships outside. He is looking at the ships outside as the bigger threat right now. Um, 
he would love to delay them further, especially um, the biggest threat is actually this ship here that's alone with the civilian ship. If these get activated, that civilian ship is gone, and then, you know, it can just move on further. And then there's kind of an equal matchup here. Um, so he would like to executive order, that's that one that lets someone else move, um, our Brezza here, who is out in his ship. And Brezza, because he has the CAG title, gets to order someone else to attack before he attacks. And so he's going to do that. And then he actually gets two moves because of how the executive order works. So that's going to be three shots. They could clear all these guys out. Um, Brezza is, however, going to send this guy forward to protect up there. And then he's going to try and shoot those two himself. And he shot one. And he shot the other. So he's feeling pretty good about his manhood. Right, and finally, some reprieve. This is going to move thing the jump track up, which is a relief for everyone. Still not far enough for them to get out of there. Um, Admiral Nine or not Nine Ball. Uh, sorry, Tater as Tot is got a decision to make. So she her choice, and this is kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't choice, is either to remove all of these guys back to the reserves and send nine ball to sick bay or uh, just straight up lose her morale. Now here's some things she needs to consider. One, there aren't a lot of guys out there, right? Um, two, on his turn he should be able to go out there with one other guy. Um, so really it would be a matter of sending one of these guys to the reserves and sending um, nine ball to sick bay. Yeah, that's a tough choice. I'm going to have to consult with her. Um, either way, it's going to make people suspicious of her choice for one reason or another. There, it's, it's close enough that there could be some rationale for um, foul play, whichever, whichever way she goes. All right, and the only suspicion change was Hubba's. Um, he became more suspicious of Tater. Partly because he has an either-or proposition, right? Because they were the three that were involved in that skill check where there was an, some obvious Cylon involvement. Um, and he also didn't have a stake in that position. So Brezza and Nineball both would have been affected adversely if she had chosen the former option. Um, she went with the minus one morale, which kind of affects people universally. Uh, it wasn't enough to make Watermelon more suspicious of her, but it was for Hubba. So now the... Um, Base stars are both going to shoot at Galactica, and if you recall, if I recall, they need to get a five or higher, and that's a one, and then a four, so they lucked out on that, and then that moved up. Things are looking brighter. We're getting close to exit. After Brezza cleared out his quadrant, he missed, he ordered this one to shoot and missed. Um, we have yet another setup of bad guys, pretty much the only, because of um, a limit on pieces, there's no more Vipers to come out yet, and this guy's already out there. It's just going to add some more civilian ships. So all the civilian ships are now in play. And this is one from one of the first episodes of the series called 33. This this guy is not... Let's see. You, you Yeah, this base star is going to keep popping up even after they jump until either a base star is destroyed. Keep this card in play. This card is in play when the fleet jumps. Shuffle it back into the crisis Oh, I see. I see. No, the, the card just goes back. It just goes back into the deck. Tater, as in Tot, had several options on what she could have done in her turn. What she decided to do was she went to weapons control here, and she shot at this base star. Um, maybe kind of an odd move, considering that, you know, there's raiders that are trouble. They maybe jump out quicker. She could have used the same same strategic plan she just used on that role on this guy. There's definitely going to be a loyalty check, especially since she's one of the marked three. Maybe I should mark those. These are the guys that are kind of have a general um, suspicion feel. And maybe I should have actually may, uh, not, not nine ball. Um, mark that with the numbers. But anyway, she rolled and she damaged the base star. And so we'll see what that does. It makes it so the base star can't shoot at them, which is pretty good. If this gets three damages, it's it's done. Unfortunately, the next crisis did not allow the jump preparation track to go up. Um, in some weird colors, purple and red, the only two people who actually added in were Brezza and um, 
uh, what Tater has in time. Uh, they they were the only two, and so we'll see what the result is right now. Doesn't seem very good though. Okay, so we have trust instincts. What that's going to do is make it so that these two come in, and this. If at least three strength cards and in piloting skill cards are in the skill check, the current player may activate one. Okay, so that doesn't really do anything unless there are three red cards. Um, that's negative three. Negative one. Another trust instinct, so we're going to do another two of these. And I think I'm supposed to do all the zero ones first, but... Uh, um, so that's... Um, negative five, negative three. <laughs> They're just... Oh, here's another run. red one. That's zero. And then negative six. So that's not going to be enough. And there weren't three red ones, so there's not going to be an, uh, activated anything. They're just going to lose uh, thousands of people. Because he's such a maintenance engineer, uh, Hubble was able to use not one but two actions, both repairing... Um, all the damaged vipers. So there's something in the reserves now, which is good because there's a, a lot of viper, a lot of uh, raiders have just been launched. Uh, we'll see what the crisis card is. It could very well be that we lose a civilian ship if they're activated. Here we go. And luckily they're not activated, but unluckily it's going to activate this guy right here and this guy right there. So he's going to move up the track, which is going to make it incumbent on the humans to deal with him. Uh, sooner than later. Alright, so we have in the ring some people are boxing. That's a huge crisis <laughs> to have happen during all of this. Um, so basically it's a pass. There's there's an addition to morale. Fail, you lose morale, and someone goes to sick base. So I guess that means that uh, Hubba is involved in the boxing match. I wonder who he's fighting against. Uh, let's see. It looks like He's one of them, but he's out in a spaceship, so it must be this other guy that he's fighting against. And then there's this, if any cards have this little marking on them, um, he, Hubba gets to choose another player to go to sickbay. So that could be very interesting when someone has a choice to make for, and it says May, so he doesn't, oh no, he has to choose another player to go to sickbay. So it's going to force him to piss someone off, and that is going to be fun if that happens. We'll see. I'm going to add cards in the skill check, and then we'll resolve it. Um, luckily for the humans, this is going to jump up the track. So then she is going to have the choice next turn. I'm getting ahead of myself of whether or not to leave um, the colonial spaceship in order to come down here and try to jump early, which could lose uh, even more population. And they're not doing well in population. So that could be uh, another one of those choices where people are going to be suspicious of her regardless of what she does. And we got a good hearty stack of cards. Everyone threw in. Watermelon started off, she threw in four. I think uh, Nine Ball threw in two or three. Same with Brezza. She threw in two, um, as did Hava. So, you know, it's it's a good chance they're going to pass this one, which is which will be good for their morale um, to actually finally be successful at something. Their jump track will be going up. Things will be looking up for the humans. Here we go. All right. That's three, five, eight, eleven, eleven. Those cancel each other out. That's why I did that. Um, 12. They've made it. If there's no more negatives, 17. Wow, I think they're going overkill. 18. 20. 21. Yeah, this is just abs absurd. Ooh, here's one of those with the symbol. So he's going to send someone to sick bay. Uh, some other number. It just keeps going up and up and up. Yeah, it's like near 30 what they had. That's a that's a huge waste of resources, but they I think ever they just wanted to be successful. Um no evidence of Cylon activity there. Uh Brezza isn't someone people are suspicious of, and there was only one red card against. And after seeing all those cards going in ahead of time, it wouldn't make sense for him to put in anything negative. It would just tip tip his hand and be foolish. Though maybe that's why he did do it. I don't know. Alright, so uh Hubba has to choose someone to go to sick bay. Let's look at how he feels about people. He obviously thinks Tater is the traitor, so she is going to sick bay. Um Pretty pretty simple choice there. 
if she doesn't move before her next turn, she is going to get some trauma, and she will only get to draw one skill card. That's the bad thing about Sick Bay. Um, oh, I should probably move these up. And this is going to go over here, and that's going to go up. After asking everyone if they had a strategic planning card, remember that's the card that adds two to the D8. Um, no one did, but Watermelon decided to move down to, to faster than light control. Anyway, met up with Felix Gaeta. He ended up being helpful, um, which, if you recall, reflects on Brazza. Brazza must have put this token there over something else. So that was very lucky. That moved this up one. Um, so the pet, if, if, if she doesn't get the roll, they're only going to lose one population instead of three. Makes it a much better proposition. Uh, so she was kind of betting on Brazza in moving there, and she bet well. All right. So she's got to roll a 1d8. If it's six or higher, they get a jump regardless. But if the, the roll is six or higher, I think they don't lose population. Otherwise, they do. And so they're going to lose one population, but, you know, that's a lot better than it would have been otherwise. You know, they could they could have been losing lots of population, lots of things. So they're going to jump away. All of this stuff is going to disappear. And our admiral here is going to choose where they go. So a lot has happened as a result of Watermelon's turn, and she hasn't even done her crisis yet. So... People felt good about Watermelon's uh, job in jumping the fleet. They were happy about that. They felt less good about Tater's choice of destination. She chose deep space, lose one fuel, one morale. Um, for those of you who don't know, a lot she's going to choose between two different locations, right? And it's hidden which one she chooses or which one she doesn't choose. Um, a lot of them cause you to lose stuff, but that doesn't mean you're going to be popular after doing it. I think it's like being president of the United States. Uh, if anything bad happens, even if you're choosing between the lesser of two evils, people are going to fault you for it. Another thing is, is this doctor appeared in sick bay. Um, Watermelon also had to assign um, a trauma to him, sort of like Brezza did earlier with Felix Gaeta, who was in faster than light control. Uh, here we have... Um, uh, Tater as I'm taught right there in sick bay uh, what she chose for the trauma is going to depend largely on uh, I think in, to some, in some respects uh, how she feels about Tater um, so if we could take a look right there watermelon is pretty suspicious of Taylor, Tater so it's likely it's going to be the negative option uh, though maybe not it's kind of she's kind of got a middle middling level suspicion there on her scale of one to five we'll see what she chooses and we're going to end things on a crisis what happened was the humans uh, the last surviving members of humanity jumped out into deep space under the direction of admiral tater as in time and they found themselves out of power. They had to decide whether or not they're going to put a lot of effort into dealing with that. They decided not to because the only bad thing, if they fail, is their jump preparation track is reduced by one. It's already at zero. You can't get lower than zero. And so they're just going to see what fate has in store. It's very unlikely that um, they're going to beat that number uh, by all agreeing not to play in. However, the Cylon isn't going to have the opportunity to play um, one of the cards with this symbol, which would cause Galactica to be damaged. So if that symbol does show up, it's only going to be purely from Destiny. And it looks like that's not the case. So their jump pre preparation track is going to be zero. And we're going to end this rather exciting session on a kind of a nothing note. <laughs> And the power is back on. I am going to end things now. Uh, I had a lot more time than I thought. I, th I thought my wife was going to be back with the kids much sooner, but it turns out she wasn't. I'm going to end before they get back because I feel like this is a good starting point. I want to end with a prediction. We're getting... We're going to be getting into, I believe, what is either the most interesting or the least interesting portion of the game, depending on what happened before and depending on... Um, depending on the people you're playing with. So what I mean is we're going to be in a portion of, we had a lot of stuff happening, a lot of calamity and whatnot. Right now, I think thing the next session of play, things are going to be far quieter. Now when things are quiet, uh, either players can just not do a lot 
um, and get bored with the game. Or that can be where the real politics comes in, where people try to grab the presidency, where people act on their suspicions. Their, their energies are not um, being funneled off in this very obvious direction of destroying spaceships and repairing spaceships and all that. So they're going to really have to um, confront each other, I think. And depending on what they see, they're going to have to act in certain ways. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, I think there's only so many of those cards that cause um, uh, Cylons to attack. We went, through, we went through several in a row. So probability is we're not going to get too many uh, for a little bit. There's still that Cylon on board that shouldn't be too bad since people can actually focus on it. Um, there still be more crises. You know, the levels of the humans are pretty low. That was a, that was a really rocky start. But we could be in this, this quiet patch where, because a Cylon was revealed, I think there's going to be some, some interpersonal drama more than focused on the outside. Next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Achoo!